Hello, and welcome to solving quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula comes to us from the standard form of a quadratic. Uh, a quadratic equation equal to 0, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And then using the method of completing the square, pop, 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 magic happens, and we come up with the quadratic formula. If you're interested in uh, knowing more about how ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 ends up at x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, feel free to email me at mathwithtuesday at gmail.com. I'd be happy to make a video on that. It's just uh, really not the, for, uh, the, the focus that I, I want on this particular video. All right, but I'll show you how that, that happens if you want to know. So here's the steps to solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. First of all, we have to have our quadratic equi uh, equal to zero. So still get it equal to zero. Put the quadratic in standard form, so everything's decreasing, equal to zero. And then we'll substitute values for a, b, and c in the quadratic formula. We, when we're simplifying the quadratic formula, we simplify radical first, and then the overall fraction last. And we could always check our answers in the original. Let's take a look here. First step, uh, set the quadratic equal to zero. Fantastic, 4x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals zero is already equal to zero, already in decreasing uh, standard form. So I'm going to write over here, a equals four, b equals three, and c equals negative 10. I strongly urge you to write those down as you're getting used to the uh, quadratic formula. Now this formula, uh, I'll make sure I write it over and over again so it's always on the screen with us uh, as we're, as we're uh, going through these examples. But every time I see a letter, I'm going to rewrite it with parentheses. So I will have negative b, so b is 3 plus or minus the square root of b, so parentheses, 3 squared, minus 4 times 4 times a negative 10, radical and fraction, neither one are long enough, all over 2 times 4. This first substitution is very important. So it's the step I check most often. I make sure that my uh, values are substituted incorrectly with positive or negative signs as needed. Um, now I'm going to take this up to the next column here. Simplify a little bit as we go. Negative 3. Now inside the square root, we call this the discriminant. And we have a calculator right here. We could just do a 3 squared minus 4 times 4 times a negative 10 to get 169, so that's the square root of 169, all divided by 8. Now we'll simplify the square root first. Let me write my numbers first, uh, correctly first. x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 169, anyone? That's right, it's 13, all over 8. So I simplified the radical, now I can simplify the fraction, I'll have negative 3 plus 13 all over 8, and I'll have negative 3 minus 13 all over 8. Negative 3 plus 13 is 10 over 8, and we'll always simplify our fractions to get 5 fourths. And here again, negative 3 minus 13, this is a negative 16 divided by 8, which gives us a negative 2. Let's tag a little x equals on there, and we have our first two answers. But when I get an answer like this, x equals 5 fourths, x equals negative 2, that tells me I could have factored it, but we're not working on factoring. We're working on the quadratic formula. Let me pop the quadratic formula in over here. about as sloppily as I could possibly write it. All right, so remember, our steps are going to be, first we get this equal to zero. So negative two h squared minus seven h, I'm gonna add nine to both sides, 
equals zero. So we see our A value is negative two, our B value is negative seven, and our C value is nine. See how the variable is H? That doesn't mean X will equal, this means H will equal. Whatever our variable being squared and uh, using a linear term here, whatever variable is in the problem, that's the variable out here. Now, I'll have negative B, so a negative negative seven, plus or minus the square root of negative seven squared minus four times negative two times nine all over two times the negative two. Let's move that up here to the new line uh, using the quadratic formula down here. We have h equals a negative negative is a positive seven plus or minus. Now I'm gonna use parentheses as I should have this first time. Negative seven squared minus four times negative two times nine. So the second time when I evaluate, I evaluated it in my calculator exactly like it's written uh, on my, we'll call this paper. Uh, it would be paper if I chose to print it out because that's what I print on. So we'll have uh, seven plus or minus the square root of 121 over negative four. I've completely forgot the square root there. Sorry about that, gal. Seven plus or minus the square root of 121 is 11 over negative four. So I'll have seven plus 11 over negative four and seven minus 11 over negative four. Seven plus 11 is 18. 18 divided by a negative four is a negative nine halves. Always reduce your fraction. Seven minus 11 is negative four. Divide that by negative four and I get one. Let's remember what our variable is and say h is equal to. All right, again, we could have factored, but that's not the point of this video. All right, this is a great time for you to try one. It's already uh, equal to zero. It's already in descending order. Give it a shot, pause, come back, check the work that I have. All right, I know you didn't pause, that's all right. Your math skills will improve if you pause when I suggest it though. Right before I do each problem, hit pause, try it, then watch me. Don't erase your mistakes. Put a little memo next to it, right? As you're writing down, oh, I forgot this negative here. Uh, use a different color, write these out. Uh, my students are provided with skeletal notes. I could probably provide those. If I think about that, I'll get the descriptions all fixed up for you. Um, but that's, that's the best way to learn math is to do it. Here's the problem. You do it, then watch what I did, and compare the results. All right, so we'll have x equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 13 squared minus 4 times 2 times 15 all over 2 times 2. Let's put a little cage around this so I don't run into it. We end up with x equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root. I'm not going to finish, uh, forget that square root this time. So I'll have 13 squared minus 4 times 2 times 15. It's a 49. all over four. Well, we know that the square root of 49 is seven, so we simplify that radical first, and then the fractions. Negative 13 plus seven over four, negative 13 and seven makes six. Six over four is three halves. And a negative 13 minus seven over four is a negative 20 over four, which is a negative Five. Let's call that x equals. Yep, that was a poor placement. Um, but using the quadratic formula, we could factor. But for those of you that are not big fans of factoring, this, this is a godsend. I mean, this is this is fantastic. 
And it gets even better. We could use a uh, quadratic formula when we have decimals in our problems. Uh, nobody really wants to factor using decimals. So let's give it a shot if we use quadratic formula. Let's add 6.5x to both sides. Add 6.5x. That way we have decreasing order. A is 1.5, B is 6.5, C is 2. We will have x equals negative 6.5 plus or minus square root of 6.5 all squared minus 4 times A, 1.5 times C, 2. All of that over 2 times 1.5. All right, so x equals negative 6.5 plus or minus the square root of, I'm going to clear that out. We have uh, parentheses 6.5 squared minus 4, parentheses 1.5, close parentheses, parentheses 2, close it up, and we'll have 30.25. All over one and a half twice is three. Now, what is the square root of a 30.25? Isn't that nice? And that's how we can tell this is an intermediate algebra approach. Most of the time, we end up with these nice values. So we simplified our radical. Now we can solve our equations. Negative 6.5 plus 5.5 all over 3. And negative 6.5 minus 5.5 all over 3. If you need to when you're working with negatives, go ahead and use your calculator. Uh, if I owe somebody 650 and I only have 550, I will still owe them a dollar. That 3 in the denominator still matters. Uh, 6.5 and 5.5. 6 and, five and, a half. Six and five make 11. Those two halves combine to make another 1. So 11 plus 1 makes 12. Notice they're all negative. So let's simplify our negative 12 over 3 to get x equals negative 4. All right. We could do this next one. I don't want to. I just don't want to. Um, so I'm going to delete it because that's the power of being the creator of the video. I could just make changes like that. All right, so let's do some examples where, okay, we have we have all these examples. And if you need to uh, go back and look at previous videos, I did one on the square root property. I did one on factoring. And now this one on quadratic formula. So now we have the choice. How do we want to solve each of these? What's the best method? Well, for this first one, I would definitely start by factoring. See how they have an x in everything? It's not even a quadratic. So I'm going to factor out an x. And I'll get 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. And part of me might say, hey, I should factor that. But the other part of me says that, well, factoring tells me x equals 0 or 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. So I have one answer. But on this one, the 4x squared plus 5x minus 6, if you're not feeling factoring, I would be pretty tempted to use the quadratic formula just on that portion of it. So I'll have a negative 5 plus or minus 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times a negative 6 all over 2 times 4 which gives us x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of we have 5 squared and that 5 is positive so I, uh, I was lazy I didn't use my parentheses but I will over here uh, as I have 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 6 which is a 121 all over 8. That gives me x equals negative 5 plus or minus. The square root of 121 is 11. 
negative 5 plus 11 over 8 and negative 5 minus 11 over 8. 6 eighths is 3 fourths for an x value. And negative 5 minus 11 is negative 16 over 8 is a negative 2 as an x value. And just for an emphasis, keep in mind, x cubed is the highest power. We'll have x equals 0, x equals 3 fourths, and x equals negative 2. Sometimes we can use a combination of methods for solving. Now for me, as I look at 6p squared plus 15 equals 21, I see a single variable. It happens to be squared. So I'm going to use the square root property. 6p squared equals 6. I'm trying to isolate the squared variable. I'll get p squared equals 1. Now I'll take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of both sides, I have to include the plus or minus. And this seems like a fairly straightforward one. Square root of 1 is 1. This is a great answer. But in a lot of online homework systems, you might have to enter them separately. Make sure you separate them by a comma. Um, probably for my math lab as well as WebAssign, uh, XYZ homework uh, from McKeague, uh, Patrick McKeague. They also use, I believe, this form. So just, you know, once you know how to find the answer mathematically, that's the, that's the most important part. Um, but sometimes you just have to figure out how to use your, your system too. What is it looking for? If there's no plus or minus button to be found, just list them separately. And number three kind of screams to me factoring, but the way it's set up, I really want to do a completing the square, and I'm not sure why I would ever think that. Um, so first two methods that come to mind. So I'm going to think factoring. If I do factoring, my first step is add 5 to both sides to get the equation equal to 0. So I have 0. Now I'm going to factor. That'll be k plus 5 times k plus 1. And then we'll use the property. k plus 5 is 0 or k plus 1 is 0. In which case, k equals a negative 5. That negative kind of got away from me. Or k equals a negative 1. And we, that's fine. We could be finished there. But I was also thinking about completing the square. Because the variable parts are isolated and the 6 is a nice easy half. k squared plus 6k equals negative 5. I'm going to take half of 6, which is 3, square it and add it to both sides. So I'll have k plus 3 all squared equals 4. That tells me that k plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 4. So k plus 3 equals plus or minus 2. If k plus 3 equals 2, I can subtract 3 from both sides and get k equals a negative 1. And if k plus 3 equals a negative 2, when I subtract that negative 3, I'll get k equals negative 5. So same answers that we got uh, using factoring, but maybe completing the square came to mind for you first. Uh, it doesn't matter which method, you're going to get the exact same answers. So that's the reason why we, we try to have multiple tools, multiple uh, methods of solving equations, because some work better in certain situations. This last one, as soon as I see decimals, I'm going to the formula. And I would say 99 times out of 100, I would use the quadratic formula on this particular type of equation. So let's take a look at the answer. Identify my A, my B, and my C. I remind myself that the quadratic formula says x equals 
negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a so that I could pop in my values x equals negative 4.1 plus or minus the square root of 4.1 all squared minus 4 times 1.3 times negative 7.2 all over 2 times 1.3. This is a negative 4.1 plus or minus. Calculator turned off on us. We got tired of waiting. 4.1 squared. I listened to uh, one of these videos one time. I don't do that very often. I don't like hearing myself recorded. I don't know of anybody really that does. Uh, but uh, you can hear all the clickety clicks as I'm using my mouse on this on this uh, calculator and it kind of cracks me up. We get 54.25 square root of 54.25 divided by 2 times 1.3 that is 2.6 and then we ask ourselves kind of crossing our fingers wishing upon a star bummer this is not not a nice answer at all so since that radical doesn't simplify good enough for me and good enough means it doesn't give me a decimal and I would have to do a little bit more math than I care to if I were to simplify that using fraction form what we'll do in this case is we'll have negative 4.1 plus the square root of 54.25 divided by 2.6. So I'm going to enter negative 4.1 plus the square root of 54.25. Notice I didn't just start typing that decimal. I want the, the big number itself, the whole thing. And then I'm going to divide it by 2.6. And that answer, 1.25594612. So we're going to round that to one decimal place as our numbers are to start. I'm going to call that x equals 1.3. Right. Our exact answer is sitting right here. Our other exact answer. Don't forget you have two of them. I'm going to show you a second method. The second method is put the entire numerator in a parenthesis. Uh, subtract the square root of 54.25. Come out of the radical, close the parentheses, and divide it by the 2.6. So you could do this entire thing in one step or in two steps as I did in the first one. Negative 4.409792281. We're going to call that x equals negative 4.4. All right, there you have it. Solving quadratics using the quadratic formula and a little bit of decision making as to what is the mess, best method based on the quadratic you have to solve. That's it for this video. Thanks for listening.